Hi everyone, welcome to Val's Tales. I'm Val Fortelli, writer of these stories. I'm Val's sister, Wendy Walker, and I'm the narrator. And Wendy's daughter, Jazz, is our producer. Every fortnight, we'll bring you a new story. Sometimes funny, sometimes sad, always thought-provoking. Hello again. I've forgotten which one we've got to. We're on season two, episode four now. Right. Ah, this one is called Kismet Catch-Up. And what's this one about? Well, my trademark is always quirky. This was actually a rather boring story, so I thought I'd give it a little twist. It's about a very successful businessman who interviews unexpectedly his childhood sweetheart for a job to work for him. Your stories are never boring. Very quirky, sometimes, yeah, quirky is what is a good word for it, but they're never boring. And this one, once again, made me cry at the end, so thanks for that. <laughs> oh, I remember you having a little weep about one from the first series. Mm. I never thought of that. I'm glad you liked it. Over to you. Kismet Catch Up Look, I don't know how to tell you this and I don't want to hurt you, so I'll just come out with it. You're a really sweet guy and will make someone very happy. It just won't be me. I wish you all the luck in the world, Greg. Take care of yourself. With that, she leaned over, gave me a kiss on the cheek and was gone. It must have been over 20 years ago now, but I recognised her straight away, even if her job application was not under the name I'd known her by when we were teenagers. My private office had CCTV covering every part of the building. It was mainly for security rather than to snoop on my employees, but I did use it occasionally for other purposes. Penny, who was carrying out the interview, had been with me nearly two years and was shaping up well. I was thinking of promoting her, but one or two rumblings on the office gossip grapevine had encouraged me to see for myself and make up my own mind when she thought she was being unobserved. As soon as I recognised Jay sitting here, all other thoughts went straight out of the window. Her naturally blonde hair was a shade or two darker than I remembered but still had that soft, silky look that made me want to run my fingers through it and caveman-like pull her close. She'd put on a bit of weight, not too much, just enough to round out her curves which suited her, as I'd always thought she needed a bit of fattening up. With a start, I pulled myself together. I was 40 years old, the owner of a multi-million pound business, a self-made man who people relied on, not some lusty youth who couldn't control his hormones. She was still beautiful, though. Not in the traditional way. Slightly too tall, a larger nose which, if it had been pert, would have given her a doll-like appearance, and a skin colour which looked as if she'd spent too long in the sun and would be turning any day from rosy red to a healthy tan. The interview was over, and as she stood up to shake hands with Penny, she was facing right into the camera. Oh, those gorgeous blue eyes just seemed to be staring straight at me as if she knew she was being observed. I was the one to look away first, and then the door closed behind her and she was gone. The gentle trilling of my desk phone brought me out of my reverie and I leaned across to answer it. I thought you might like to know, boss, my secretary said. The interviews have been completed. From more than 100 applicants, we've shortlisted six with two reserves. I'm sending over their CVs, but how do you want to play it from here? Do you want to see them individually on separate days, or get it all over with in one go? Your diary says you got some space on Thursday or Tuesday next week. Apart from that, you looked pretty booked up until well into next month. Thanks, Pam, I replied. Let me have a think, and I'll get back to you once I've read up about them. You get off now, and I'll let you know tomorrow. Good night. Good night, and don't stay too late. You need sleep as much as us lesser mortals. Cheeky mare. I couldn't help smiling even when I was pretending to put on airs and graces. 
Pam had been with me for years and treated me more like a naughty child than the one who paid her wages. She was the mother I'd never had, but I knew it wouldn't be very much longer before her health forced her to retire. I'd miss her so much. So that was my life. Unmarried, rich, successful, but without that special lady to share my bed. Why was it the women I loved the most were all like elderly family relatives? Except Jay, of course, but that was a whole different ball game. Was she on the shortlist? If she was, should I let my loins dictate a business decision? If she wasn't, would I be tempting fate by giving instructions for her to be included in the finalisation process? Would she even remember me? She'd rejected me once, so perhaps she wouldn't feel comfortable working for me. My mind drifted back to the early days. Her father had been a somebody in our small town, and when his wife fell ill and couldn't have any more children, nothing was too good for Jay. Despite that, she never appeared spoilt, but perhaps that was the reason for her rebellion to escape his suffocating love. Was I only making excuses for her leaving home rather than wanting to stay with me? At that time, I didn't have a lot to offer. The illegitimate son of an alcoholic mother who serviced any man who needed it as long as it provided enough to buy her next bottle of booze. My education suffered as I hustled to earn enough money to put some food in our stomachs. But my senior school tutor insisted I had a brilliant brain if only I could pursue an education. When mum died, I remembered my teacher's words and went to night school, took online courses and committed myself to repaying the confidence shown in me. She was right. The more I learnt, the more I hungered, and from one small start-up business, my empire grew. I'd wasted enough time reminiscing, so with a sigh, I opened my emails to browse the submissions from the candidates. Something I'd discovered was we can be inadvertently influenced by a nationality or a strange-sounding name, so I'd implemented the strategy that anything I saw was initially received without any form of identification. I would love to work for you because I admire the way you have become so rich and famous. Yuck. First off the list. As I worked my way through the submissions, I conjured up a picture of the applicants. Would they get me in what I stood for? An hour later, I'd put the eight people, including the reserves, onto three lists. Rejected, possible and one favourite who stood out from the rest. You have achieved so much, but I believe you have plenty more to offer and would like to be the one supporting you as you reach for the impossible. I was always told I approach any problems both feet first, so I've probably scuppered my chances, but thank you for even considering me. Take care of yourself. Trusting my instincts had stood me in good stead in the business world, I immediately sent off a message for Pam to see the following morning. Book applicant number 16 in for Thursday morning and let me have her CV. I assume it is a her, and yes, I do mean please. I smiled as I pressed send, knowing Pam would have been ready to storm in with a lecture about manners, and I had beaten her to it. Somehow I had the feeling applicant number 16 came from the same mould. Thursday morning arrived and I felt as nervous as a schoolboy. I was the boss, so it should have been Jay who was apprehensive. Yes, unwittingly, I had picked my childhood sweetheart as my prospective new assistant. She didn't seem at all surprised as she was shown into my office and I indicated she should take a seat on the other side of my desk. You're looking well, Greg. Sorry, I should probably be calling you Mr Ramson if you might be my future boss. How are you? Oh, heck, may I start again? Good morning, Mr Ramson. Thank you for seeing me. You haven't changed, Jay. Probably as well if I point out I wasn't influenced in any way, as all the applications I read were in anonymous format. Anyway, that wasn't the name I knew you by. You do recognise me then. I wasn't sure if you would after all these years, but I've been following your business progress and I was so happy you achieved your dreams. The name change is a long story. Let's just say it didn't work out and Rebellion has a lot to answer for. What would you like to know about my work experience? Trust you to get straight to the point, I smiled as I manoeuvred my wheelchair round to her side of the desk. How do you feel about working for a cripple? Does that mean I've got the job? Yes, if you want it. Thanks, on one condition. 
none of this feeling sorry for yourself. The accident affected your legs, not your brain, and we've got work to do. Actually, there's two conditions. Am I allowed to give the boss a hug for old time's sake? Somehow, I had the feeling my life would never be the same again. But I couldn't wait to get started. Thanks for listening. If you're enjoying these stories, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Podbean or our YouTube channel. You can also follow Val's Tales on social media. Details coming up.